Survival horror games are games known for having multiple varied ending types. Usually this is based on a specific action or story event being accomplished, but Silent Hill 2's system is unique in its series and the genre at the time for attempting to analyse your playing style when deciding which ending you should receive. The system has become a fairly well-known element of Silent Hill 2, but what I've always found strange is that if you attempt to, like, look around for how to achieve any particular ending on the internet, the results you get are always kind of vague. People have a general idea of how it all works, but you won't find the exact details on any fan site or wiki. And in some cases, you might find this pearl of wisdom from IGN Strategy Wiki telling you that particular actions make some endings unobtainable. Spoilers, this is completely wrong and is not true at all. I know IGN getting something wrong, shocking. It was not until fairly recently that the PC version of the game was reverse engineered and the exact logic demystified, and the results reveal a lot of interesting things about Silent Hill 2's design. So that's what we're here to discuss today. Join me on a journey through the hidden math of Silent Hill 2's endings. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. So first, so we're all on the same page, let's go over what the endings actually are real quick, in a very broad sense. Firstly, the three bonus endings, Ritual, Dog, and UFO. These are all accomplished by collecting specific items and doing a specific action and exist outside of the ending calculation system. Just thought I'd mention this so people don't flood the comments going, what about the dog ending? Doesn't matter, forget about it. No, what we're here for are the three main game endings that are all possible outcomes of your very first playthrough. Leave, Maria, and In Water. Let's briefly go over what these endings are so you can grasp the general gist of the gameplay context. You don't really need to know the deep lore of Silent Hill 2 to follow this, I'm going to keep it pretty light, this isn't an analysis video, I'm just here for the math. So, the leave ending. This is the ending where James simply leaves Silent Hill after discovering the truth and moves on with his life. You obtain this ending by keeping James in good health as you play, showing a willingness to stay alive. The Maria ending. This is the ending where James leaves with Maria, who is a manifestation of James's imagination born of the trauma over his wife's death. You achieve this ending by spending time with Maria, protecting her from harm, and checking up on her at various points of the game. And finally, the In Water ending. This is the ending where James drowns himself in the lake, unable to go on living after the events of the game. You obtain this ending by keeping James in poor health over the game and investigating disturbing things. What I've just described is the usual vague explanation you're likely to get looking this up on the net, and while none of that is, strictly speaking, wrong per se, it's not exactly very specific, is it? So, how does this actually work? Let's get into it. So, first thing to know is that the basic framework is that every ending has a score, like a tally. Various actions or playstyles will increase or decrease a given ending's score, and at the end of the playthrough, the ending with the highest score will be shown. Simple enough. What's immediately telling is the starting score of each ending. Leave ending begins with 5 points on the tally, Maria with 3, and In Water starts with 2. So right off the bat this tells us that if the player does nothing special in their playthrough and doesn't influence the score at all, which is quite possible, they will simply achieve the leave ending. From this we can infer that the leave ending is kind of the developer intended first ending, because the way the system is set up makes it inherently likely that most people will receive it first. Now, what actions can increase the leave ending score? Firstly, listening to the entire conversation in the hallway before the final boss will give you a point and overhealing such that you waste about 200% health points worth of healing also awards you a point. That's a bit confusing, so let's be more specific. If you're at, say, 90 HP and you heal for 25 HP, the wasted overheal is 15 HP, because the max is 100. If at the end of the game your total overheal is 200 or more, gain the point. And that's it! Those are the only two actions that can award leave points. But there are also actions that can reduce your points, and in this case, attempting to go the wrong way after meeting Maria in the park and having her remind you of the correct way to go will deduct a point from the leave ending. And that's also it. So the leave ending has a starting score of 5, a maximum score of 7, and a minimum score of 4. Not a massive range here. This is important, by the way, I'm not just saying numbers for no reason. It bolsters the idea that the leave ending is the default ending as such. There aren't that many ways to greatly increase or decrease the score. To contrast, the Maria ending has a maximum score of 8 and a minimum score of minus 3, which is quite a massive range. So firstly, the increases. Spending 10 minutes or more near Maria will get you a point. Near is kind of hard to define because video games don't use metric, but like, you don't need to be right next to her, a room of like, this size is generally still near. Checking up on Maria in the hospital room after she lays down will also award you a point. Except oops, twist! These two conditions are bugged at least on the PC port. 
The 10 minute timer is constantly incrementing at all times when Maria is not even activated, so most of the game. And the checking up on Maria point is awarded automatically the first time you enter the room, which is mandatory. So on the PC version of the game at least, these two points are unmissable. It's unknown if they're bugged on the console version, and also when I say PC version, I mean the raw, unmodified, vanilla 2002 Windows port. I don't know if these bugs are fixed in the popular fan-made Enhanced Edition version that I'm using for footage here. It seems pretty likely there's a lot of bug fixes for that version, but I cannot confirm. Bumping into Maria less than three times also gets you a point. And if Maria has taken less than 3% of the damage you have over the whole game, you also get a point. So basically don't allow her to take much damage, but also has the consequence that just getting hit in general actually makes this point easier to get. But there's a quirk to this, because simplistically it's calculated like damage taken by Maria divided by damage taken by James. But what if you complete the game without taking any damage at all? Then you'd be dividing by zero, and that's no good. So there's a failsafe baked into this calculation that if your damage taken is zero, the game just automatically gives you the point and skips the rest of the calculation entirely. Incidentally, this combined with the two points that are bugged on PC in the bumping point is the reason that speedruns are very likely to obtain the Maria ending, because completing the game without taking damage is relatively consistent for this kind of player, giving them a four point gain, putting the Maria ending at seven points relative to leave ending starting value of five. And the final Maria point can be obtained by attempting to go back to see Maria after she dies, again, in the labyrinth twice. You gotta do it twice, once isn't enough. Now conversely, the Maria ending also has the largest number of ways to reduce its score. Starting with going the wrong way when exiting the bowling alley and having Maria remind you where to go. That costs you a point. Looking at the photo or letter from Mary in the inventory twice will also cost you a point. Hey, there's that IGN thing. So they weren't like 100% wrong, just 90% wrong. Still a failing grade, but there you go. Spending five or more minutes far away from Maria will also cost you a point. Far is once again a bit hard to define, but you can basically only get this when running around outside. Any indoor environment isn't large enough to be considered far away. And two points can be lost for dealing damage to Maria. 32 points of damage loses you an ending point, and the second point is strangely difficulty dependent. 80 points of damage will lose you the second point on beginner or easy, while it only takes 40 damage on normal or hard. This is the only condition in the game that depends on the player's difficulty, and also note that this is specifically damage dealt by you to Maria, not damage she takes from monsters. And finally, hilariously, bumping into Maria a whopping 30 times will deduct you a point. Just to recap, this results in a maximum possible score of 8 and a minimum of minus 3. I don't actually know if the game will even store a negative value for ending points, it's not important at any rate. Now, the in-water ending. Right away, listening to the entire conversation in the final hallway gains you a point, which yes, is the exact same condition as the lead ending. This is the only condition in the game that overlaps with another ending, so that action gets you points in two endings at once. Reading the diary on the rooftop, that's a point. Afterwards, reading the second message in Neely's bar, not that there was a hole here, it's gone now thing, the bit right next to it, that's a point. It's kind of funny that the phrase that became something bordering on a meme doesn't actually do anything, but the thing like right next to it does. Examining Angela's knife in your inventory will also award an extra point. The final two points are awarded if your bad health score is above 60 or 240. But what is bad health score? The simplistic explanation is that it's a number that increments the longer you spend at below 50% health, with the exact rate of increase being dictated by this formula. The simplistic explanation here is just less health, number increases faster. Spend enough time at a low health to receive two additional points for the in-water ending. And there are surprisingly no actions that can actively reduce the in-water score, so in-water's minimum is the same as its base value, two points, and its maximum value is eight. So all in all, these are the figures we've come away with, and there's interesting conclusions you can draw based on this alone. For instance, while the system heavily weights the player towards receiving the leave ending, a savvy player who is able to fulfill most of the criteria of a given ending can force the game onto that path. If there is a tie, the system tie breaks with hard-coded priority in the order of leave, then Maria, and then in water. Now, perhaps you're content with all of this so far, but maybe you're someone who's actually played the game a lot and are currently giving this video a bit of a quizzical look. After all, when you played the game, you got all the endings and you didn't recall it being this complicated and specific. Well, hypothetical viewer who probably wasn't thinking that at all, you're right, because I've left something out up until now and that's what I'm going to call the unseen ending bonus. See, when you complete the game, your ending will be shown in this form as a number out of four. This is how many endings you've seen over all playthroughs of the game, and if you haven't seen an ending, 
the game awards extra unavoidable points to those endings. On your first playthrough, naturally no points are awarded, but if you, say, achieve the leave ending on your first go, on your second, both Maria and the in-water ending will have an additional point from the start, weighting your outcome towards endings you haven't seen. If you're only missing one of the three endings, that ending will gain two points, giving the final ending a massive boost. The fourth ending in this set is the ritual ending, and whether or not you've seen it doesn't factor into this calculation at all. I just thought it needed to be mentioned because it's out of four. Similarly, going back to tiebreakers, there's an additional asterisk to that that I didn't mention. If two endings tie, the game will show the ending the player hasn't achieved yet, assuming one exists. This sounds pretty simple when I lay it out like this, but I think it's a pretty brilliantly weighted system. The boost is such that more leisurely players with a vague idea of what to do can generally achieve all of the endings without needing the entire system's guts laid bare like this, but the boost isn't so large that it becomes impossible to force the game onto a specific ending if you're actively trying to do so. Because despite all of the highly specific actions I've outlined, nobody ever really complains that Silent Hill 2's endings are hard to achieve, do they? With a complicated system like this, you think there'd be more discussion among players of the obtuse requirements, but because of this waiting, the player base of the game has largely been able to make do with these vague explanations I mentioned at the start of the video for years. Because really, for most use cases, you don't need anything else. It's a pretty elegant microcosm of the careful construction of Silent Hill 2 in general, that down to the way it delivers endings to the player, it's constructed to feel reactive and responsive to your playstyle, but without feeling obtuse or difficult to influence, while also not necessarily forcing players to experience the endings in any given order. There's certainly a preferred order indicated by the system, but the game allows first-time players who play in a highly particular way to have the chance to experience the game in a different and perhaps more personal way than if they simply forced everyone to get the leave ending on the first go. And that's the whole system of Silent Hill 2's endings laid bare. I would like to thank Jokey W, as he is the person who reverse engineered the PC port and derived pretty much all of the info in this video. All of the specifics are thanks to his work, link to the page containing his research will be in the description if you want to see this explained in a more programmer type way. I hope you learned something today and maybe gained another facet of Silent Hill 2 to appreciate. If you enjoyed, please drop a comment and a like and consider subscribing. I hope to make more videos about interesting things in video games and check out my Patreon as the algorithm is unpredictable and scary. And above all else, thank you for watching.